You know, Coach Swayze, you ask about Coach Swayze as a, as a coach. He was like a father to me. He was a storyteller. He always had a story about everything. He, he had them about me and all the other players. Like I say, he's my mentor. He, he did things for me that other folks wouldn't do. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you a little different than they told him. But uh, Coach Swayze was a good coach. He was good to me. But he did mind correcting you when you needed correcting. And he usually was right. It was in the blistering heat of 1956 when Rebel Baseball first stepped into the national spotlight. The Diamond Rebs finished 18-5 in the regular season, and with Florida being on probation, were given the right to represent the SEC in postseason play. Although at the time, it wasn't nearly the spectacle that it is today. I didn't ever think much about it, and you know, when it got down to it and found out we was going to going to Omaha, and it's just like we went to Gastonia, went and had a good time, and really didn't know the importance of it like you do now. Well, we never had been uh, where we compared ourselves to anybody outside the SEC. The College World Series had only been instituted two or three years before, so uh, the rest of them may have, but I didn't know that there was such a thing as a College World Series. Despite the red and blue being in championship contention, a discrepancy between SEC and NCAA rules halted six star-studded seniors from playing, leaving then-coach Tom Swayze with a decision. We had a pretty strong senior class that year, uh, really some top uh, players. We had All-American second baseman Bernie Schreiber, All-SEC center fielder Eddie Crawford, who led the SEC in home runs. And uh, some other good players, Archie White, Don Go, that were seniors and didn't get to play. Uh, Coach Swayze came in there and said, well, we can go to the NCAA, but we're losing so many players, we don't want to embarrass Ole Miss, so I'm going to let you all vote on it. We all voted to go. We wanted to have fun. You know, we hated that they couldn't go, but I think we took it as a challenge. You know, we were relaxed. We wasn't supposed to win anything. We wasn't supposed to go. So we had an advantage, I think, on some teams because we were relaxed and could go. Some of us were playing out of position. We made an error, you know, that was understandable. And we relaxed and played good ball. We had won at Gastonia, North Carolina, beat Duke and some other teams for the right to get there. And it was like cloud nine, man. We got there and we thought we were, uh, we, we were top dog. Oh, it was great. More people than we'd ever seen in one location. We'd, we'd probably get about 250 for a game out here at, at Ole Miss, and uh, I think they had 20,000 for the first game that we played. You'd look around, and there's folks sitting everywhere, and left field, right field, uh, all around the stands, all the way around, up to 20,000 people. So, uh, like I say, you, the only thing we didn't need to do was play ball because you know, we, if we started looking around, we'd get nervous. We were kind of awestruck. Most of us uh, old country boys, and uh, we played growing up in fields that, uh, you know, would have a drop-off in left field or whatever, and the infield would have pebbles in it you'd have to pick up. And so we were awestruck, but we also uh, recognized at that time, I think, that, hey, you know, we had gotten to the top. With a patchwork lineup of inexperienced underclassmen and a makeshift pitching rotation, the 1956 team went 6-3 and three in their postseason run and finished third in the nation, an accomplishment they were honored for 60 years later on Swayze Field. It's hard to describe those memories. I, I think uh, about our old field over there where... It was next to the band hall, and it was not much in terms of uh, stadium. It was bleachers, more or less. And uh, uh, over the left field fence was the stadium. Uh, had to go across the street for the restroom <laughs> back then. Uh, really a, a, a top drawer stadium these days. And one of the best in the nation in college baseball. And we old folks that come back uh, like to sit back and relax and dream of having played on that, although it had a good feel, but uh, it was a great experience to be involved with that stadium when we come, come back and visit. They built uh, at Swayze Field is a beautiful ballpark. It was one of the first ones built in the SEC as far as I remember. 
And uh, he was so proud of it before he passed away that because uh, they had named something after him and it was just a beautiful outcome. And uh, it's great to come back and watch the enthusiasm they have. And uh, the camaraderie is still there at Ole Miss. And uh, it's a special place. Man. You get hooked. It, it was it was it was great playing. It was great because of the people that we played with. I mean, getting a chance to know the people that that we know. Here we are, 60 years later, visiting with people, getting caught up with people that we really enjoyed being with 60 years ago.